and welcome everybody. It's a fabulous Sunday. That means that for me and us, it's CCNA Sunday. If you're looking at this or watching this at a later time, it's perfectly great. It's good to have you here. If you have not already yet subscribed to the channel, please take a moment to do that. Hit the alert bell, make sure you get all the updates. And our objectives for this Packet Tracer Lab session is to focus on VLANs and switching. Now, if you're saying, hey, Keith, what exactly are VLANs and how does switching work and so forth? I would <laughs> I'd strongly, first of all, it's a great question. And second of all, I'd encourage you to grab the, our Go to the Master playlist here on YouTube on my channel for CCNA 20301, and I put them in order. You can just pick and choose and go right down the list. So this Packet Tracer Lab, which I'm gonna walk you through, will give you the opportunity to practice some of the skills and knowledge you've learned about VLANs and about switching and get a functional network. So without further ado, let me, let me share with you how you can get this file. Uh, Packet Tracer, as a heads up, is downloaded from netacad.com. You get a free account at Cisco at netacad.com. Download Packet Tracer. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through, starting with a basic framework, how we can implement VLANs and make sure that our connectivity works in a lab that's partially built and give you the chance to take it to the next step and make it fun. <laughs> easy for me to say, and make it fully functional. So I'm glad you're here. Let's go ahead and take a look at how we can get this file, and then we'll walk through it together. So this is a browser I have open, and this is at uh, thekeithbarker.com, and that's where you could go to get the packet tracer file that we are going to start with. So the packet tracer file that I am going to start with doesn't have the complete solution. It's just a basic framework, and that way you and I get to focus on the concept of the VLANs and making sure we have end-to-end -end connectivity. So uh, if you go to Keith Barker, thekeithbarker.com and click on downloads or scroll down, either way is great. Here is the file we're going to work with today. Cisco PT for Packet Tracer, Layer 2 Switching and VLANs. I'll go ahead and click on this arrow right here. And that uh, asks me if I want to open or download it. I'll go ahead and say I'm going to save it. And now it's going to save that into my downloads folder. Let me go ahead and bring that open. So here's my downloads folder. I'm going to extract that, extract all, and I'll put them right there in a separate folder. Great. So these are the three files that are in there. One of them, and this is so cool because what you can do is you can go ahead and share this with people if you'd like. Take that zip file, and it has the Packet Tracer Lab, the title. It has the instructions of where to get it, and also it has the details. Let me close that. has the details on what we're going to do. So in this lab, what we're going to do is we want to use VLAN 10 for the laptop and the server, and VLAN 10 is using the network of 1067.83.32. Trunking is already configured. DHCP services are already configured. Have fun. And then there's a link down here for the Discord server. And I put here a link for downloading this file in case you share this zip with somebody so they can download the file and do it on their own. And also a link to the master playlist. So if somebody wants to come back here and do the walkthrough and watch the walkthrough, they can see it. So that's one of the files there is this packet is the details. Uh, another file is the actual, let's see here. Oh, this is the, the thumbnail that I use for the video. And let me bring that over. Here it is right here. So the reason I added the, added the thumbnail was because if somebody's going through the playlist and thinking, oh, I want to go to that specific uh, Packet Tracer Lab on YouTube, you can just go to Keith Barker Networking, actually it's the Keith Barker channel, and just go down to the master playlist and look for the one that looks like this. I put a little red icon here for Cisco Packet Tracer. That way you can easily pick them out of the playlist if you just want to get more and more hands-on practice to reinforce what we're learning. All right, and then finally, I've got the actual lab itself, which is uh, the one we just downloaded unzipped, and it's right here. So we'll just open it up and that's where we'll start. So I've already logged in to uh, use Packet Tracer. So it's just gonna ask me to, it's just gonna bring it up. You might have to re-log in if you have logged out previously. And let me just line up the slide for a moment. Do, 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 lighting up the window. <laughs> All right, here we go, I'm back. And let me size this a little bit to, um, Let me slide that over just a little bit there. And let me make it a little bit bigger too. Okay, so our objectives, let me get my pen out. Our objectives in this Packet Tracer Lab is regarding VLANs and layer two switching. And I drag that over here. Fantastic. And let's do this. So in this topology, I've got a laptop. It has a wireless module in it. I've got a generic access point. So it's not using a controller, it's just an autonomous access point that's providing access to the network. I've got three switches, switch one, two, and three, and I've got a DHCP server, and it has an IP address already on it. So our goal, if we, <laughs> if we look at our goal again, it is, let me bring up the uh, PDF there. 
Here it is. Our goal is to use VLAN 10 and make sure the laptop can open the web page to the server at 10.67.83.35. So we have a couple of ways of tackling this. We could start at the server or we could start at the client. And uh, I would say let's start at the server and let's just verify its IP address. So in Packet Tracer, we can hover over this and there's the IP address of 10.67.83.35. We could also open it up and go to config and go to fast ethernet zero and just verify the IP address. Great. So it's got an IP address and let's also, um, uh, let's make sure that it's in VLAN 10 because the goal said we want the client and the server to be in VLAN 10. So the way we'd verify that is we go to the switch. So on the switch and in your output on your screen, if when you do this lab, if you don't see the port labels, you can just go to um, options and preferences and there's an option right here to go ahead and say, always show port labels. And that way you can tell exactly what ports are there and in use, especially if you're not, if it's not between two Cisco devices and you can't use CDP, it's a great thing to have that documented. All right, so let's, let's verify on switch three that port FA0 slash two is in VLAN 10. So to do that, we'll click on switch three. That brings up the physical view of switch three. I'll make it a little bit bigger here. I'll click on the CLI tab and uh, let me scooch this over a little bit more. That'll give us a little more real estate to look at the screen. All right. Here you go. Come on, buddy. Come on. All right. I put down my pen for a moment. All right. So on switch three, let's do a show uh, VLAN brief. That'll be great. Show VLAN brief says that uh, FA0 slash 2, that's this bad boy right here, is assigned as an access port in VLAN 10. So that's a great start. So this, <laughs> the server is in VLAN 10 and that was our goal. And we already verified the IP address on that device. So let's, um, hmm. and it said trunking is already in place. That means trunking here and trunking here is in place. Uh, let's go make sure the lap, I don't see the uh, little symbol here for the laptop having wireless connectivity through the access point. Let's tackle that one next. And also at this point, I should point out this. If you want to pause me right here, stop the truck and work on this on your own to help verify the details of how to create the VLANs and make sure it's all working. Pause me right now, download the file, do the work, and then you can come back and enjoy me uh, and we can enjoy our time together for the walkthrough. So anyway, you want to slice it, it's great. Or if you want to watch it once and then download the file and then walk through it and then watch it again if you have problems, either way is great. But the key is, the secret, the secret sauce is make sure you have hands on practice. That way you can run into challenges and problems and opportunities for improving and then improve. And then the, as you do more and more hands-on practice, whether it's live gear or simulations like Packet Tracer, you're going to get better and better and more comfortable with the technology. And that's the goal is to really understand how it works and be able to configure it. And those skills are really important as we start troubleshooting because then we can say, yeah, this isn't working. Why not? We can look into the details of it. All right, onward and upward. So let me clear off that and let's go to the laptop. So here on the laptop, hmm. Okay, so I'm gonna click on the laptop icon here and let's go in physical view. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit and let's go to the desktop and to our, let's go to config. Device must be powered on. Okay, well, <laughs> huge clue that if this device isn't powered on, it's not gonna be too effective in connecting to anything with a copper UTP cable, Cat5 or Cat6, or with a wireless module. So right here, I can see in the physical view that it has a wireless module here. And so let's go ahead and power it on. So I'm gonna click on this power button right here. And now it's powered on. All right, yay, now it's powered on. Oh, and now it's connected, says this little icon here. So let's, uh, let's hover over that device. And it has, oh, look at that IP address. <laughs> Anytime an IP address starts with 169, that means that it's an automatically private IP address assignment and it's not good. So if it's a DHCP client, which it likely is, that means it couldn't get to the DHCP server. So let's do a few things. Let's, let's go to switch one and make sure this port, FA0 slash one, is in VLAN 10 because that's where the server is. Server's in VLAN 10. Let's make sure switch one port FA0 slash one is an access port in VLAN 10 as well. So we'll click on switch one. We'll scroll over a little bit here. And once we size these and we don't close these windows, we can just pop back and forth between these devices. It'll be really easy without having to resize them every time. So let's do a show VLAN brief. <laughs> All right, a uh, couple problems here. One is FA0 slash one 
right here, uh, which is this bad boy, which equates to that interface, it's in VLAN 1. And the second problem is there is no VLAN 10 at all. It doesn't even exist. So it's hard for a port that's connected to an access point to be in VLAN 10 if it, the port isn't assigned and also the fact that there is no VLAN 10. So this is a this access point is re, uh, configured as a lightweight or a autonomous access point. It's not talking to a controller. Think of this access point like a bridge between this port on the switch and the wireless clients. Same layer two network for the connectivity purposes. So we need to create VLAN 10 and assign this port to VLAN 10 if we want the access port access point to be in VLAN 10 and thereby the client also being in VLAN 10. Uh, again, without any type of wireless LAN controller in play, at play at all. So let's fix that. And again, if you want to walk through this, stop me. <laughs> stop me now. And you can walk through this on your own and then come back and, and enjoy the solution together after you practice it if you like. Hands-on practice is the key. Okay, so switch one. We could do this, config T and interface FA0 slash one. Now what traditionally is going to happen if we don't have a VLAN, the VLAN doesn't exist. If we assign a port on the switch to that VLAN, it'll do two things. It'll assign the port and on most environments, it'll create that VLAN right there as well. So instead of saying VLAN 10, enter to create the VLAN and then going to the interface and assigning the switch port to that VLAN, we can do it in one fell swoop in interface config. So interface FA0 slash one, checking my port, right? And uh, switch port mode access. So it's an access port and switch port access VLAN 10. Ah, look at that. They even gave us a message. So, hey, that VLAN doesn't exist, but I'll create it. So now we do a show VLAN brief. Now we have VLAN 10. Yay. And we have FA0 slash one associated with it. So if we go to the PC and I'm going to just power it off and power it back on. So here on the physical view, I'm going to power it off, power it back on. That's, that's a nice clean way of saying, okay, all bets are off. Let's see if the DHCP process works again. If it gets an IP address and then we can ping the server, uh, we're good to go. So let's give it a moment. So no IP address set yet. Okay. DHCP could take a moment, but you know, it takes longer than DHCP timing out from a failed DHCP. <laughs> Yes, it's it's not happening. Let's go over to the server while we wait for that. At the server, I just want to verify that DHCP services really are enabled. They're supposed to be. So we click on services on the server and yeah, uh, DHCP and the DHCP service is on and it's handing out IP addresses on the 10.67.83 slash 32, uh, .32 network. And it's going to start at .40. So this client should get an IP address somewhere between .40 and 49. I guess that 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49. Yeah. So 40 through 49 doesn't seem like 10 addresses, <laughs> but it is. Anyway, uh, let's go back to our client. And yeah, it does not have an address. And let's just verify the client real quick. So if we go to config and wireless zero, uh, it's supposed to use DHCP and it's got the information here for the Wi Fi. Oh, look, 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 look. It says shows connected here. Huh, let's see what the IP address is. Oh, no, uh -huh. Yeah, so this isn't good. I mean, we have the connection to the AP. That's wonderful, but it does not have an IP address. So let's, a couple things we could do. We could hard code an IP address here on the laptop in that same subnet and just try to ping to the server. And that way, if it's a DHCP related issue, we could solve it that way. Um, hmm. Really, the choice is ours. Let me just give this another moment. So wireless, IP, DHCP. Usually, it'll show an IP address down here, the IP address that it got. And I don't see any IP address. We, we had a 169 address a while ago, and now we've got nothing. So let's do this. Just for a test, uh, let's take this server, which is at the IP address 1067A3.35, and let's hard code an IP address in that same subnet on laptop 
on the laptop, and then we'll go ahead and just try to ping across. And that way we can, if it's DHCP related, we can resolve that later. So on the PC or the laptop, let's go to wireless zero, IP address static, and let's configure 10.67.83. Uh, what was the server? Let me take a look. Yeah, sorry, wasn't done yet, wasn't done. Okay, it's 35, let's make the client 36 because there's no other IP addresses in use in this topology at the moment. So let's go back to the client and 10.67.83.36. <laughs> and I'll put the mask on the next line like it wants me to. 255.255.255. Uh, what was the mask? Um, I believe it was a 27-bit mask, which would be that. So join us for subnet Saturdays. And in the playlist, there's a whole section on IP addressing and subnetting. I believe that was the correct mask. We'll go ahead and confirm that. Let me go back over to uh, the server just to verify the mask real quick. So config or phys config interface zero. Yeah, so a 27-bit mask. So let's go to the PC and try to ping that address. So we'll go to the desktop, command prompt, and we'll do a ping to 10.67.83.35. Yeah, that's not happening. All right, so the focus here is a lab on VLANs and switching. So we've assigned, let's take a look, let's do a roll call real quick of what we've done, and then we'll finish this off and wrap it up <laughs> if, we get the, if we get the full connectivity here and here. So we assign, this port already was in VLAN 10. This switch didn't have VLAN 10, so we created it and assigned this port to VLAN 10. So the access point is in VLAN 10, the client connected to that access point would logically also be in that VLAN. And then we statically assign the address of dot 36 on this guy, this guy is 35. So IP addressing in that slash 30, in that dot 32 subnet should be fine. You know what we didn't check? <laughs> check this out. Um, if this guy didn't have VLAN 10 on it at all, it's also a good possibility that switch two also doesn't have a VLAN 10. And here's the bad news. If switch two receives a frame that's tagged over this trunk, trunking is already set up, but if it receives a frame that says, hey, this is for VLAN 10, and switch two says, I don't, I don't know what that is. I don't know what VLAN 10 is. I don't have a VLAN 10. It'll drop the packet, and that could be causing our problem as well. Because one of the things that people forget, especially when they're brand new to networking, is that if we're forwarding a frame of data for VLAN 10 all the way across the network, every switch in that path needs to know about VLAN 10, that it exists, even if they only have trunk ports supporting it. So let's check that out. Let's go to switch two, and here on switch two, Let's go to the CLI, and let's do a show interface trunk. I just want to make sure we have trunking in place. Yeah, so we have trunking in place. Oh, look at this, yeah. So it's trunking on both ports, and if you haven't gotten to trunking yet, uh, there's a couple videos in the master playlist that cover trunking in detail, but we've got two trunk ports, for one going to switch one, one going to switch three. Look at, look at this, VLAN's in spanning tree forwarding state and not pruned. All we have is VLAN one, uh, and I bet you, yeah, if we do show VLAN brief, this switch doesn't know anything about VLAN 10, and that's why those frames, when it sees them, says, I don't know what VLAN 10 is, and it drops them right there in the middle of this topology. So let's create VLAN 10. So we'll do a VLAN 10. <laughs> there we go, and show VLAN brief. So now we have a VLAN 10. There's no access ports associated with it, but if we do a show interface trunk, now we have forwarding on ports, uh, VLANs 1 and 10 are both being supported and forwarded over these trunk links. So that was the missing piece. Let's go back to the laptop and let's try a ping. Okay, so now the ping works to the server, but I wanna get DHCP working and making sure that DHCP can be used. So let's go to the client again. I'll close the desktop here. Let's go back to uh, config and wireless zero and let's use DHCP. Ah, hey, yay! So this just got the IP address right there, 1067A340, which is the first IP address in the pool that the DHCP server is handing out. And if we go back to the desktop and we go to the command prompt, let's try the ping again. Fantastic. We can also do commands here at the CLI like IP config, just to verify the details of our IP address. And the goal, what was the goal, Keith? Well, the goal was to 
um, have the laptop open a web page at the server on the server at 1067.83.35. So let's try that. And if that works, we're done. And we can move on to the next lab or the next video or whatever is next in your studies as you pursue your skills and improve your skills in CCNA. So let's go back to Packet Tracer. Wow, lots of windows open here. And, uh, oh yeah, back to the server, back to the client. I'll close this window with a little X and let's go to web. Wow, full screen works, full screen works. And right here, I'm just gonna click on web browser and we'll put in the IP address of 10.67.83.35. Thirty-five, And by default, because the browser assumes it's going to use HTTP, that's what it would use. And there we go. This is the Packet Tracer web server at dot .35. That's our web server. So our web server also acting as a DHCP server. So there's a small page. There's the image page. Here's the image. Yeah. So the web services are working through this layer two network. So here's what we've accomplished in this Packet Tracer lab. I threw in a couple snags because I want you to work through these and have a good time learning and getting better. Couple problems here, uh, and, this is, and if you're looking at the very end of this video, this is a spoiler alert for what, what we just did. But we downloaded the Packet Tracer Lab from thekeithbarker.com. We then brought it up, we logged into Cisco's Netacad so that we could actually run Packet Tracer. And then we turned on the laptop, it was off by default. We created VLAN 10 on both switch one and switch two because it wasn't even in existence. We set up the access port on switch one for the port that connects to the access point to be in VLAN 10. And then those were all the problems. And in the process, we did the process of elimination of uh, what's not working here, why is that not working? And I, I encourage you to take some time, schedule I don't know, 10, 15 minutes, download that file, take that zip that has the instructions, also has the packet tracer lab, and also the document, the PDF, that includes the URL for the master playlist. And I would encourage you to take advantage of all those resources. And that's my call to action is to, if you haven't yet, take a look at that master playlist at Keith Barker here on YouTube and enjoy it. And if you wanna brush up on another skill or two, feel free to just enjoy that playlist. And I'll be adding new videos as I have been for the last three months. I'll be adding new videos, uh, at least one or two every single week, including some new Packet Tracer Labs that you can download, practice to hone your skills. So thanks for joining me. It's been great having you. And I'll catch you, my friend, in the very next video. Bye for now.